Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Betty and I am an education major here at Texas State. Now, when I took the Texas core exam, I don't know, I kind of stressed myself out a lot about it. Um, I didn't know what to use to study or what not to use or to spend my money, things like that. I had a lot of question marks just around this whole test and I let it kind of stress me out. So I don't know if you guys are in the same boat, but um, as I went through and I was studying for this test, I found really good um, resources and I found some that, you know, just weren't worth the time or the money that I want to share with you guys today. So yeah, I hope this video can be useful for y'all and help y'all pass on the first try. That was my goal anyway, and I was able to do that. So yeah, I hope these resources can help you guys in any way and let's just jump into it. The first resource I purchased to help me study for the Texas 291 core exam was Certified Teacher. Now, I go to Texas State and Texas State really encourages us to use Certified Teacher. They give us a discount, discount code for them and I used it to help me study for my PPR and for my ESL test and I used their uh, test guide or I think that's what it's called, test guide, test prep, something like that. Um, and that basically, it just gives you like flashcards and then it gives you practice tests where um, from how you do on those practice tests, it will break down the competencies and give you quizzes for them. And I liked that. I liked it for ESL and I liked it for PPR. It helped me pass on my first try, um, but I didn't know if it was gonna be thorough enough for core because the core has five domains. So basically five subjects It has ELA, math, science, social studies, and fine arts. And then within those domains, you have the different competencies. So it ends up being a lot of material to study. And I didn't know if that was gonna be like explicit enough for myself. So I also noticed that certified teacher has this thing called a study guide and that breaks down the domains into study modules basically. So you can purchase one module for one domain or one subject, um, or you can buy all five for ELA, math, social studies, whatever. And so I was going back and forth on what to spend my money on because for the test prep or test guide, whatever it's called, um, that was like $30 with the discount code that Texas State gives us, but the discount code wouldn't work for the study guide. And for all five modules, it ended up being over $100. Um, and what I ended up doing was just biting the bullet and I purchased it and I just didn't like the way that it was organized after I read it. It didn't stick with me. Like I wouldn't pass the quizzes and things like that. So I just, I didn't enjoy it and I didn't enjoy the price tag of it for it being over hundred dollars. You should not pay that much money for testing materials. Um, a lot of the things I'm going to show y'all today are free. There's better things out there. You'll see as we go on to the video there. So yes, this first resource, Certified Teacher. I would just say skip it for core. I don't think it um, is as explicit as you need to really help you be successful on this test. Okay, so the next resource I'm gonna talk to you guys about and I highly recommend is the REA, I wrote down the name of it, the REA Texas Core Subjects 291 book. And I'll link a picture of what it looks like um, somewhere over here. But um, you can get this book on Amazon. It's super cheap. I think it's less than, it's definitely less than $30. It's in the $20 range somewhere and it's prime. So you can get it, you know, quickly, uh, hopefully. I know that Amazon's kind of backed up right now, but it's prime, so it's great. Um, now this book is a very big book. Um, it's probably one of the biggest books I've ever read. Um, it's big, but it's very thorough. So the book is broken down again into the five domains and then within the five domains are the competencies. So it really goes in depth to help you feel confident about the content. Um, this test is majority a content exam. Some of the domains will have, you know, like a few questions about instruction and proper instruction for the different subjects like best practice for reading, best practice for math, things like that. But for the most part, it is testing you on your knowledge of math concepts of, you know, history, things like that. So, um, and that's where I needed the most help and the most, you know, information and resources and stuff. So that's why I recommend this book so much is because it really goes in depth to make you feel confident about uh, the information. So I really liked this book. Um, I know that a lot of people uh, use it and it really helps them do well. Um, and another benefit to this book, so in addition to getting all the information 
physically in front of you, it also has an online portion. And so what you do is you just, when you get your book, scratch off the little code and then make an account on REA. It walks you through it when you get your book, um, but make a account because when you have your account, I'm pretty sure it has diagnostic tests for you. And I highly, highly recommend you take those diagnostic tests or any diagnostic test before you start actually studying for this exam. That way, you know, like your strengths and your weaknesses, but that's a sidebar. But anyway, so it has diagnostic tests and then it has two practice tests per domain or per subject um, to really help get you familiar with not only the time constraint that you have, because you have a set amount of time to take each part of this test, um, but then there's also you know, the amount of test questions that you have. So it's good practice for you to just get in the system of seeing test questions and using like test taking strategies or whatever. So I really liked REA. I would really recommend it. And for the price tag, you, you really cannot beat it. So highly, highly, highly recommend this. And that's the bulk of what helped me study for this exam. I made flashcards from the um, like concepts in it. And then I also took notes and that really helped me study, um, you know, and be successful. So yeah, highly recommend this book. Quizlet. Quizlet, Quizlet is going to be your best friend or, you know, one of your best friends for this test. There's so many, um, ones that people have made on Quizlet. If you just search Texas 291 core, you know, reading or social studies or whatever you want, um, flashcards for or more specifically you want to focus on there's a bunch already on Quizlet but I whenever I was studying I made my own flashcards I physically had index cards and I made them just because again I'm that type of learner if I write something down it's going to stick with me more um but I made all of my physical flashcards into a Quizlet and I'll link that um in the description box for you guys um I used other people's for reading and for math there's really good ones out there um, that I would just recommend you searching and finding, but um, I made really thorough and in-depth ones for history, or well, a lot for history, but that social studies, science, and then the fine arts. So I'll definitely link those down below, but Quizlet, it's great, it's free. We're all used to using it in college and it's gonna, I think it's gonna be a good resource for you to study for this test. So the testing company actually makes preparation guides to help you study for this test. And I came across them right before I took this test. I took this test a few months ago and literally like nights before I took it, I would just go through those preparation guides um, because one, it lays out everything that you need to know for this test. So I used it one way when I was studying more specifically for social studies and for fine arts because um, fine arts, man, fine arts. So random that I looked through preparation guides because it specifically lays out what they want you to know um, because then that stuff can be on your test. So if I saw for art or whatever, they want me to know about lines and I can't even tell you dynamic something, I don't know, the instruments and things like that. It specifically lays out what you should learn. So then I would just use that as like a cross reference and make sure that I wrote something down about it or had a flashcard about it, whatever. So it helped me check my bases and make sure I was hitting the key like concepts that it wanted me to, especially with history as well. Um, there's a lot of, you know, like historical figures and stuff in that preparation guide that it tells you you need to learn these people. So one, use the preparation guides to help you with that. But two, it also has practice tests and practice questions on there that again, is coming from the test company. So you know that they're gonna be authentic and probably a really good indicator of what it's gonna be like on the actual test. So it's a really good reinforcing uh, resource that I highly recommend. And again, I don't even know how to describe on how I found it. So I'm just gonna link what I'm talking about down below and that way it pulls it right for you guys and y'all can use it and it's simpler. So yeah, highly, highly recommend uh, using this as well. It may seem weird to use the TEKS to help you study for this test, but it does help you be familiar with what the different grade levels learn um, and when they learn things and just being familiar with the differences between the grade levels. So knowing, let's say like in fourth grade, they learn Texas history versus in fifth grade they use um, or they learn about US history, you know, things like that, especially in reading, because I remember I had a few questions 
where it asked me about the development of when students start to learn to read or their spelling development and things like that. So reading over the TEKS, it really helped me familiarize myself with just the development across the curriculum. Um, so I used the TEKS for that, just skimmed it briefly. And then I also used the TEKS again, how I use the preparation guide. So if I saw a key term, like if I saw in the TEKS that they learn about Benjamin Franklin and the founding fathers and things like that, I wanted to make sure that I knew who those people were, what that specific event was in history, um, things like that, just because again, it's a content test, so if it's in the TEKS, as a teacher, you're gonna need to know them um, on this test. It's definitely not like necessity for you to memorize this. I didn't memorize it by any means. I just looked through it, familiarized myself with it, and that's what I'd recommend to anyone who's taking this test, just to look through it um, and be familiar with it. So yeah, use the TEKS. They're very useful. I actually came across this resource on UTSA's website. So shout out to them for providing this for their education majors. Um, but basically it's EBSCO Learning Express. I've never heard of this website before, um, but I'm very um, thankful for it for this very reason. So um, again, I will link the website in the description box that way y'all can just click on it and it's more straightforward. But um, once you click on the link, it has like a little search bar and you'll just type in Texas 291 core or Texas core 299, whatever the test that you're taking is, and then whatever subject you want. So if you want a practice test for math, reading, whatever, they have all of the domain. And yeah, they have two practice tests per domain per subject. Now I will say these practice tests are a little bit more challenging, but I kind of enjoyed the challenge. I liked seeing different questions and just getting myself familiar with it and again these practice tests are they have the time constraint and they have the accurate number of questions that you're going to see on the actual test so it was good practice for me to just experience what it would be like but then it was also just more opportunities for me to see questions and get that practice so the last resource that I wanna share with you guys today is none other than YouTube. I found two YouTube channels that I really enjoyed using to study for this test. And the first one, I wrote down the name. Um, sorry, I don't have these memorized or anything. So the first account is Michael Hayes and I'll link his YouTube channel down below. Now, Michael Hayes does science videos. So they're usually pretty short. I wanna say they're like five minutes long. I think that's like what he advertises in like the title of his videos or whatever, but it's all about science and it, he has like a video for each um, competency. So if there's a competency that you just wanna focus in on or you need more help on, I would recommend watching his videos. Um, I liked watching the videos kind of like as an aid to the book that I was reading. I liked seeing it both ways. And I felt like the video sometimes helped reinforce it um, like more in depth, if that makes sense. So highly recommend the science ones. The science ones are, they're quicker. So I feel like they're not, as in depth as this next one that I'm gonna talk about. Um, but if you need help in science, I highly recommend him and they're fun to watch. He seems, he's really engaging. So I liked that. But the next YouTube video or the next YouTube channel um, that I came across is Teach, Write, Learn. Um, and I'll link that YouTube channel down below. And I loved this guy. So I scored probably the worst in history. Um, as you could probably imagine why like there's been so many events so many key figures throughout history that they could literally ask you anything so I and I of course I forget everything so um, I failed that one miserably um, but this guy really helped go so in depth I felt like again the REA it's a great book um, I learned a lot by reading it for the history portion and just social studies in general but honestly I learned a lot and I felt so confident um, with social studies because of this guy, because of this YouTube account, his videos are a little bit longer. I think the longest one is like 20 or 30 minutes, but again, like it help, it acts as a nice break from reading. Um, reading can really kind of get kind of boring and like very mundane. Um, so it was nice and kind of refreshing to watch a video and have someone else explain it. And again, I would just take notes and make flashcards about what he talked about, um, what both people talked about. But yeah, I highly recommend their YouTube channels. I really enjoyed watching them. Um, and I think they have a lot of success with um, other people who've watched them. They've 
passed and done really well from their YouTube videos. So yeah, definitely recommend giving those two guys um, a, a good little watch. I really liked them. So yeah. All right, guys. Well, those are all the resources that I have for y'all. Um, personally, I loved majority of them. Again, like I said, certified teacher, I just wouldn't recommend, but all the other ones, um, I highly recommend. Um, they're either really cheap or free. So that's great. Um, so I hope that these can be you know, really good asset to you guys. And that way y'all can uh, hopefully pass on your first try. I don't know if that's your goal or anything. That was my goal. And these resources definitely helped me achieve that. So yeah, um, let me know if they work out for y'all. And that's pretty much all I have for you guys. Good luck if you're taking this anytime soon. You're gonna kill it. And yeah, I'll catch y'all on my next one. Bye.